Welcome back guys, or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous, and that's the highly anticipated 2025 Mazda CX-70, and that's the 2025 Mazda CX-50. These are both two of Mazda's newest SUVs. In fact, the CX-70 came out a few months ago, and I do have a full review of it. It has a lot to offer. And this Mazda CX-50, it actually came out about two years ago in 2023. It's been gaining a lot of traction ever since, and a lot of people seem to like both of these SUVs. But although they don't compete directly side by side, for instance, this one, it's a compact crossover. This one, at only a foot longer, is actually a full-size crossover. A lot of you guys do cross-shop these vehicles because you might be wondering, well, can I live with the CX-50 or is it too small? Or maybe can I live with the more expensive, more luxurious CX-70 or is it too big? These kind of overlap in price point from the top end of the CX-50 to the bottom end of the CX-70, and they have a lot in common, such as all the safety features. They are both top safety picks. They both have a lot of creature comforts and they actually compete against a lot of German and Japanese vehicles that are above their price point. So Mazda has done a pretty good job pricing both of these and making them very appealing to the masses. But they also have a lot of differences, including how many cylinders they have, what their hybridization system looks like, even to the interior and the storage capacity. So there's basically a lot that we need to talk about. There's a lot that we'll discuss in this side-by-side -side comparison to help you guys at home decide maybe one of these might be right for you. I always recommend you test drive the competition. Check out at least a half dozen videos, a half dozen vehicles if you are going to spend a lot of money on one of these. But we're going to go to the front and then to the back and everything in between to help you guys decide what you guys should know about these and what you should do with them. Anyways guys, if you get anything out of this video review, please consider liking this video. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. I love connecting with you guys and chatting back and forth about our thoughts and opinions below. Subscribe if you haven't already and check out the huge inventory at the Goody Motor Group. If you're anywhere near Northern Utah, Southern Idaho, check them out. One of the best dealerships around. Reference this video and they'll give you a big discount. And with that said, let's get right into this side-by-side -side comparison review. If you're new to Mazda, one of the things that you really need to know is that that is a Japanese automaker, just like Honda, Toyota, Subaru and Nissan. So in general, those brands are all known for, you know, affordability and reliability, developing nice, long lasting vehicles, not always the sportiest things to drive, which I think Mazda kind of put their foot down for that statement, because look at these things. They're both wide bodied. They're both aggressive and they are actually some of the sportiest vehicles that I've ever driven, having driven many of the crossovers. But one other thing I like about them is options. They both give you a lot of options. The CX-50, for instance, the base model starts about $30,000, but there's actually seven different trim levels that you can buy with the top three being turbo trim levels. So you have two different powertrain options and the most expensive one before destination delivery and add-ons, it's only about a $43,000 vehicle, which I know only saying that, that's not cheap, but for what you get, that is a pretty good price point. This one specifically is on the lower trim level side. It's an S premium, so it's a non-turbo. It's about $35,000 before your discount. And being the naturally aspirated two and a half liter and a six speed automatic transmission, it makes 187 horsepower at about 6,000 RPM and about 185 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPM. So it sounds good. It sounds like a healthy engine. The transmission shifts really well. You guys can watch my individual reviews for that. But in my area, our altitude, you know, about 4,000 feet density altitude, sometimes above a mile above sea level. It's not the fastest. This thing unloaded with me in the vehicle does about a 10 second zero to 60. And if you do buy the turbo option, that does about a seven second zero to 60 in my area. And the turbo sits right back there. Overall, I think there's a decent amount of room to work on this, but the CX-50, it's assembled in Alabama and it sells last year anyways, about 45,000 units. But it sounds like Mazda is getting ready to really up the production of these. So that's kind of cool. And then this is the CX-70. It's basically the two-door version of the all-new CX-90. Both are brand new for this year. You'll notice how much higher the hood sits than the 50. They both have prop rods, which I love, but this one being an inline six in either of its two engine configurations, and it does have an eight-speed automatic, it's a much bigger vehicle, even though it's a foot longer in total length, which doesn't sound huge. I'm pretty sure the hood opens more than a foot bigger than this. But there's five trim levels of this. They're all turbo, they're all inline six, which is one of the coolest powertrains that you can buy in any vehicle is an inline six turbo. They're known for reliability and making tons of torque, which this thing does with no exception. But it starts at about $40,000. So the cheapest non-hybrid version of this is actually cheaper than the most loaded version of this. So that's where you can start to see a little bit of carryover. 
and a lower trim level of this is gonna be specced pretty nicely like an upper trim level of this. So again, that's where the Mazda value and reliability comes in. So, oh, I, you know guys, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the turbo version of this on premium fuel makes 250 horse, three, uh, 320 torque. On normal mid-grade octane, it's 227 horse and 310 torque. And then this, if you get the non-hybridized version, the lower trim levels, it is gonna be, you know, around 280 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. Or if you get the mild hybrid, which this one has, those numbers get boosted up a little bit to about 340 horsepower and about 369 pound-feet of torque. So the most powerful version of this only actually makes about 49 more pound-feet of torque than that, and only a little bit more horsepower, about 70 more, but it does weigh a lot more. It is a much bigger vehicle. So you are maybe not gonna be that much faster than a turbo CX-50. But let me show you under the hood. The turbo is on the passenger side. It's a very long but narrow engine, being the hybrid and the three liter, or 3.3 liter inline six. But overall, they both offer a lot and they both have pretty good powertrains. Next, we need to talk about a little bit about the sizing, the wheels, the gas tank, all of that type of stuff. So it's kind of interesting to me that for the crossover segment, each half foot basically increases or decreases its classification. So this is about 15.4 feet long, and it's a compact crossover. It is a foot wider than is tall. So on its own, this thing looks really aggressive, really stout. And I think a lot of you guys who see these in parking lots agree. Just look at how wide those front fascia corners are on the fenders. So it's about six and a quarter feet wide, five and a quarter feet tall. It weighs up to about 3,900 pounds. It can tow up to, I think, 3,500 pounds if you have the turbo engine, 2,000 if not. It has 8.6 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty good. Mazda's really good all-wheel drive system and a fairly aggressive final drive ratio to put the power down. It can also do a full circle in 36 feet. Meanwhile, the CX-70, it's a full-size crossover at only a foot longer, so it's about 16 and a half feet wide. And then it is a couple inches wider than the 50, a couple inches taller and it has kind of the same profile. A lot of these, the modern Mazda design language, it's to look aggressive, it's to look sporty, it's to have a very defined front fascia, kind of like the Mazda Miata, except instead of looking very smiley and happy, these look a little bit more stern. You can just kind of see as you go through the back how much bigger the back of the CX-70 is compared to the 50, and it's probably still gonna fit in most people's garages because the height is only a you know a couple inches higher and it's only about a foot longer. So it's not gonna be a drastic difference for most people. The gas door is located on the driver's side of the 70 and on the 50. When you lock the vehicles, which they both have the basic key, the gas door will lock. Sometimes it does take a while and you can change that in the settings on the screen but it does a pretty good job. The CX-50, this one has about a 16 gallon gas tank. This one specifically does have cylinder deactivation, but it doesn't have auto start stop. So it is kind of strange that the non-turbo four cylinders do have cylinder deactivation. So if you are running maybe between 25 and 50 miles per hour, it can go into two cylinder mode if it can maintain that. But this one's rated for 25 city, 31 highway with its 16 gallon tank. And then over here, this is a little bit bigger tank by a couple gallons, and it's actually rated for 23 city, 28 highway. And this hybridized system, it doesn't necessarily say it has cylinder deactivation about the hybrid system. Sometimes hybrids turn on and off depending on what it needs and where it needs to supply the power. But with a small kilowatt hour battery, that's gonna feel like a more of the stop start system and less of the cylinder deactivation system. And this thing has gobs of power but it does weigh about a thousand pounds more. This thing weighs like 4,800 pounds, but because it does handle so well, the suspension is set up nicely and it is a very sporty driving experience. You're really not gonna notice a lot of that. What I don't necessarily love are giant wheels. Even though the suspension and the sidewall you do have really eats up a lot of the ruts and the bumps on the road, I just don't like 21 inch wheels. And then overall, it's just gonna be a more expensive tire to replace, which if you're getting a more luxurious vehicle, you know, I really shouldn't be surprised but it's a 275, 45, 21, and let's see how much tread it seems to have. Maybe about 9, 30 seconds bone stock. And then over here, this premium CX-50, it has the smallest wheel you can get on one of these, a 17 inch, and it's a 225, 65, 17 tire, which is actually one that I really like. It seems to have a very similar amount of tread on this Assurance Goodyear tire. So anyways, 
there's a few differences. You are paying more for this. You would expect a little bit more, and that's what you're going to get. I think the back of both of these looks pretty good. I think maybe the CX-50 looks better, but that's just my personal opinion. I think a lot of the, you know, design engineering went into the front half of this vehicle, and the rear kind of got left out, but also a lot of full-size crossovers, just in my opinion, don't look necessarily attractive in the back. But anyways, that's not what these vehicles are about. So let's open the power lift gates at the same time. Both of these trim levels have it. I'm gonna push the button in three, two, one. And the CX-50, it took two pushes for it to register. So that's kind of interesting. But anyways, the CX-71, so let's go back here first. It's just under 40 cubic feet. When the second row is up, look at how massive this thing is. And when you drop the huge second row, it actually gives you 75 cubic feet, which is awesome. You have buttons to drop there right here. I'll show you that. And I have the seat forward enough that the seat did come down all the way. Also an LED lighting. This ventilation is for the CX-90. It doesn't seem to be turning on when I did have the HVAC running and I came back here to check. I didn't feel anything back here, but I could hear it at the second row. So I do think that this is deactivated. And then this one has kind of the pet carrier. But down here you have a little bit more storage, just barely. And then you have a, a temporary spare tire as well. You also have the armrest cutouts from one. This was the CX-90 in the little window, and overall it seems like a nice place to be. And then if we come over to the CX-50, you have 31 cubic feet, so about eight less cubic feet back here. And when you drop the seats, you have, oop, the seat belt's doing too good of a job to hold it in place. You have about 56. So I'll just overlay some footage here because that seat does not want to go down. You also have some storage on the side. Both of these have a pretty narrow bumper and it's easy to lift heavy items into it. The loading floor is not super high, so it's going to be pretty ergonomically well designed for you and, you know, and sparing your back. You also have the temporary spare tire and the Bose subwoofer back here. And then when you lower these down, you can also lock and lower or just lower. So the CX-70 definitely has quite a bit more room than the CX-50. It's time to go through the interior and then we'll wrap this video up in just a few minutes. I do think it's worth mentioning that these are both very fun vehicles to drive, and I do have multiple driving reviews of each of them. But the 50 just being a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter weight, I personally, as a car enthusiast, someone who's driven a couple hundred cars or been fortunate enough to, I really like lower weight, smaller vehicles. Not necessarily for the safety, I'm sure the CX-70 is more safe, but it's just funner to not be fighting physics so bad when you do want to drive a car and you want to drive it in a sporty fashion. But if you open it up, they both have blind spot monitoring, they both have turn signals on the mirror, they both have keyless entry, you get a black door panel. This one is much, very much so, a black on black vehicle. There's a ton of sparkle in the paint, if you guys can see that. Unfortunately, the payload capacity of both of these five-seaters is only 850 pounds. You can see that on the door jam sticker. But otherwise, you have a cloth and kind of leather lateral bolstered seat. It's comfortable, you have lumbar support. It is heated, you have the hood release, rubberized pedals and dead pedals, just a few options on this $35,000 example. Ventilation, ventilation, lighting stock, leather wrapped wheel, and it does even have the power moonroof up top, which is a really big one on this vehicle. But if you hop inside and you turn it off, turn it off, we're turning it on, what am I saying? We're gonna use the tilt telescope feature. It does feel kind of stiff, but it works well. You can go through info right here to read what's on the center. I actually really like the gauges in this. I feel like it's very timeless. This one, unless you can turn it on through the screen, one of the settings, you might actually have a touch screen, but most of the control for this, it's out of the way of your vision and it's mostly supposed to be a, the, a dial right here. You don't want to be reaching over distracted, focused on that too much while you're driving. And I actually really like this system. I loved it when I had a 23 Miata. This is your HVAC system, heated seats. You have some cup holders, you have some storage. You have a backup camera, which is okay. The trajectory lines, unfortunately, do not move, which I disapprove of. And then you have electronic parking brake, auto vehicle hold. You can actually turn off the screen by holding that button. Kind of cool, it's also your volume knob. And then this is the scrolly dial to go through everything in here. And I really like the system. And also, they both have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. It even mentions that right there. My Miata would engage super fast and it worked so well. And then the, the voice feature to Siri worked so good. This is the French door. It's kind of awkward, it's kind of weird. You have to reach high over it. It's narrow and it's just kind of strange. I don't know why they did that. You also have a wireless charger right there. And then you have some lighting, LED. You have a place to store your sunglasses. You don't have a slide on this, but you do have an extension. 
and then you have an LED light right there. So there is quite a lot to do in the CX-50, even at about $35,000, you get quite a lot of stuff. But let's hop out of this and into the CX-70. So this is the polymetal gray metallic paint color. Looks fantastic in person, but what's better is it contrasts so well to the red leather interior. Right away, as you can already tell, this feels like a little bit more upscale vehicle. You have a lot of features. The door panel, other than nicer materials, nicer colors, anyways, it's basically the same design. You also have nothing on the door sill, rubberized mats, pedals, hood release. These are your options. That's where your memory seats are and some of your other... Oh, actually, I'm sorry, guys. This does have eye stop. I didn't see that on the window sticker, and I didn't look carefully enough earlier. But you have ventilation, lighting stock. And then this is a little bit fancier way to tilt and telescope your wheel. Otherwise, the seat is basically the same. They're both pretty comfortable overall. I do have a full driving review of the CX-50, which as of filming this, it's not posted. But I do share some more honest thoughts on how it drives and how comfortable it is and what some of you guys as owners have actually kind of commented that you don't like. So stay tuned for that video or search for it. It might already be out. But the seats are beautiful. They are heated, ventilated, and the red interior follows throughout the vehicle. If we fire it up, Oh, the door, the key is in the door now, and it's too far away, so you do have to have it pretty close. Some fun graphics right there. The steering wheel layout is basically the same. This does have paddle shifters on the back for the eight speeds. The horn, they're pretty high pitched, they're pretty loud. They do a good enough job. Info is still right there to go through the center. It's digital gauges. It is not physical like on the other car, so I actually prefer the other car for that. But these do look timeless as well. It's just that it's a digital display. And then you have a larger screen. This one, I'm not sure if it is touch screen or if you also have to turn that on through the settings. But to get to that, you have to go through the scrolly dial. So if you guys are owners, comment below. Otherwise, you have ventilation. You have all your climate controls right there. For the most part, everything is still physical the way you want it. You have wireless charger, 12 volt, couple cup holders that can disappear drive modes for sport or off-road to change the transmission and the engine tuning. You also have hill descent cameras, 360 degree view, trajectory lines move for the front and the back, super useful system. This is one of the best crossover 360 camera systems I have ever seen, if not the best. And then you have all the same controls over here, even the same awkward French door, but at least it's a little bit bigger, but because of the drive shaft and everything, this is very narrow, not super usable. Probably the least usable center console in any of the full-size crossovers I have driven, with the best one probably being like the Honda Pilot. Anyways, you have sunglass holders, you have your lighting, you have your, your garage door openers right there on your mirrors, you have the Bose speakers. This probably does slide. Yep, it does. And then LED lighting. So you see a lot of the same design cues on the 70 that you probably saw at first on the 50. Anyways, let's turn it off and it'll hop in the back of the CX-50 over there. I'll be honest with you guys, I really enjoy both of these vehicles. I think they are very well worth the money in today's market compared to reality and compared to the competition. But I did save basically the worst for myself for last for this video, the back of the CX-50. It's not cramped. It's not like a compact crossover sedan or a coupe. The door panel, kind of bland, boring black but it does the job. It's all, you know, soft touch enough. It's going to be durable, but the back seats compared to a lot of other vehicles in this price point in this class that this compares against like the Forester and the CRV, there's just not nearly as much room. You do have the child safety anchors down there, which is wonderful. You can move the seat right there, but sitting behind my driver position at five foot 11, I don't have a ton of room. I just have a few inches in front of my knees and I'm only five foot 11 and my head is basically touching this hump right here right next to the huge panoramic roof. So you probably are gonna lose a little bit of height having the sunroof. That's usually how it goes on vehicles. You do have vents, you do have some plugins right there, and you do have a center console right there with some cup holders. So it's a nice place to be. I just wish my spiky hair wasn't rubbing the ceiling and I wish I had more room and even a map pocket so I could be a backseat driver back here. But overall, it really isn't that bad. It's just a lot of black materials. And then the windows aren't huge, so they do let in enough light, especially if this is open, it almost adds like 50% more surface area to the light. But it is a little bit darker in here, so keep that in mind. Now let's hop into the CX-70 with the red leather interior. The back of the CX-70, the door panel, again, kind of follows the same theme as the front, but you also have some of the nicer materials that get carried over back here for that price point. And just like the Pilot, the Ascent, the Traverse, a lot of those vehicles, you have the extra shade for privacy beyond the factory tint. 
And uh, if you guys remember a few minutes ago, I popped the seat down from the back. I left it down just to show you how wide and bolstered and comfortable these seats are. They do a really good job, but seriously, look at how much surface area, how much real estate this has. So even for being a much bigger vehicle, you still can barely fold down the seats. So if you're a bigger driver up front, you might not even be able to lay them down. And then they're not entirely flat, but they do recline, which I really appreciate. They have the anchors as well, just like the, the 50 did right there, which is really appreciated. And they can recline. So it is a much nicer driving experience. Heck, even the all weather mats feel a lot nicer. And that's about as much as I can recline it, which is actually pretty darn impressive. Map pocket back here, something I complained about earlier. I also have all my climate controls and my heated seats, which is pretty cool. And a cup folder right there. Nice sturdy armrest. You also have the huge panoramic roof. And a 5 foot 11, I have like that much room in front of my head. I also have LED lighting, handle. And this is now a much nicer driving experience. So if you are driving around your parents, if you are driving around your friends, your family, and they are larger adults back here, they're gonna be much happier than in the CX-50. But also, you know, suck it up. You can live with the CX-50, at least most of us can. This is a luxurious vehicle. And so you are a little bit spoiled if you are in here, at least that's my thought and my opinion. And it's a lot nicer vehicle than I am used to driving. So either way, I think you're going to be well off. Ultimately, guys, the choice is obviously yours. These are two really good vehicles, one being a compact crossover, one being a full size. I hope this video was helpful in helping you guys kind of distinguish the difference in perspective of these. The CX-50 on its own looks fantastic, but next to the CX-90 or the CX-70 like this, you can definitely tell the size difference. You can definitely tell it does look aggressive, but also maybe even a little bit more mature and not just so aggressive as that one is, especially in all black. But either way, for $50,000 for the red leather interior, inline six turbo with all wheel drive, that's rear wheel drive focused, or $35,000 for this one. They're both top safety picks. They both have huge panels of glass in the roof. A lot of fancy features, LED headlights, heated seats. Guys, you really can't go wrong either way. I do recommend you test drive a lot of the other brands, a lot of the other models. I don't work for Mazda. I don't work for any of the dealerships. I'm just a random person with a random opinion on YouTube making a video for you guys today. Definitely check out the competition and make sure that if you are going to fork out that much money, you make the right decision for you so that future you is happy with the decisions that current you made. But honestly, I don't really have any reservations, any reason to not recommend these. I do think they are both really good vehicles. I've definitely spent way more time driving 50s than I have the 70s. Maybe I'll do a few more reviews of those, but I do have one from when it first came out during the summer. And anyways, guys, I wish you the absolute best. I hope you take care and please, if this video is helpful in any way, like the video. It helps it get shared. It helps it get surfaced around, to hopefully be more informative for more people. And it basically also just lets me know that you appreciate this style of video and you wanna see more stuff like this. And then comment below. I try to reply to as many comments as I can see. I can always see new comments. I can't always see replies, or at least I'm not notified the same way for those. So comment below, start a new comment thread, and let's chat down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want a great deal on one of these, check out Goody Motor Mazda. Reach out to them. Say that the YouTube guy told you that you're going to get a good deal and see what they can do for you. Anyways, I wish you guys the best. I hope you take care. And until next time, see ya.